Yeah, so at this point, you know, the the, censor, the censorship just in general is just really off off the charts. And the big example that we just had recently was um, RT, and just RT, just RT America, just being wiped out, just disappeared, like Assange was. Um, and <clears throat> you had a, lot, a whole lot of left voices on on RT America, on RT. Um, we camp, you know, we, um, we like, and they, you know, like he says here is redacted tonight show brought you anti-war, anti, anti-corporate comedy every week for eight years. And they just, they just wipe it out and wipe out the archive and it just disappeared. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's, you know, obviously with the with the Putin boogeymaning and the Russia gating that's that's going on. Uh, it's 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 leading to a lot of this this censorship and this squelching. Uh, you know, it's it's it definitely shows um, how we treat um, things differently. Uh, and it'd be exactly the same as, as saying the BBC is, is British government propaganda. Um, or PBS. Yeah. And uh, and all what you're really having here is, is just that squelching of, of, of a lot of voices, uh, people on different sides, but especially these lefties that we're talking about, but uh, that, that falls into that, that whole, um, that whole censorship empire that's going on. And then also removed, um, from RT was Chris Hedges. He's just a legendary Pulitzer prize, Pulitzer prize winning journalist. Yeah, There's definitely. Like one, one, one of the best journalists of our, of our time, really. And, so he's moved to Substack because you know RT's gone. Um, so definitely, you know, recommend you know checking out his sub sub Substack and supporting it. And one of his first articles here is on disappeared. He talks about how his whole archive of shows that that were on YouTube six years worth were just wiped out, just gone. Hit the delete button. You know, and why? Because Russia, Putin, bad. He talks about on here um, um, his whole archive was 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 removed, and you know the, these are these are highbrow like philosophy shows about philosophy and books. Uh, show about a book about George Washington, another one biography of Oppenheimer, um, Susan Sontag. Uh, he's got interviews with Cornell West, um, Noam Chomsky. You know, discussions with Glenn Greenwald and Matt Taibbi. Um, yeah, this is a serious guy with the, with the credentials to prove, and it's it's you know similar to uh, talking about Assange when you're dealing with journalists. Is that you know the, these they they have no limit to who they will censor in the name of of whatever boogeyman or, or whatever story they're trying to squelch. And just reading from Chris's article, he says, "I received no inquiry or notice from YouTube. I vanished." In totalitarian, in totalitarian systems, you exist and then you don't. I suppose this was done in the name of censoring Russian propaganda, although I have a hard time seeing how a, a detailed discussion of Ulysses or the biographies of Susan Sontag and J. Robert Oppenheimer have any connection in the eyes of even the most obtuse censors in Silicon Valley with Vladimir Putin. Indeed, there's not one show that dealt with Russia. I was on RT because, as a critic of U.S. imperialism, militarism, the corporate control of the two ruling parties, and especially because I support the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement against Israel, because of all that, I was blacklisted. Yeah, and so um, what you really have here is uh, arbitrary and similar to, to Assange, arbitrary and in um, in the best interests of the moneyed interests. I think I've heard the terminology arbitrary and capricious. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Against all of us. Unless, well, if you're a billionaire, you'll probably be in favor of this. Caleb Maupin, another very important voice on the left, who, in this way, it's, it's kind of a soft censoring, and it's not, um, it's not so much that they took down his account, but they add this nice, helpful little tag you know, Russian state affiliated media, which I find funny because he doesn't have a blue check mark, but he does have Russia state affiliated media. You made it, Caleb. He made it. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the big jokes about it is is that his his connection with RT is now severed because they got rid of RT, right? And they squashed that. So. How is he even affiliated anymore? Uh, maybe if he has a little tag on the back of his neck that says "Made in Russia." 
And, you know, and he says here, my personal Twitter account is not state affiliated media. Nobody at RT or Russia tells me what to tweet on this account. This is an attempt to discredit, discredit me and prevent people from hearing an anti-imperialist message. Shame on you, Twitter. And the anti-imperialist is, is a big part of this. You know, that's really who you see being censored. Nobody wants to talk about the fall of Rome. <laughs> and one of the things that I've heard from several people who are on, t- who are on RT and had shows on there was that um, they really felt a, a, a lot more editorial freedom on RT than, than they did on, on U.S. networks and, and other networks and other places. Um, to a person, they've said that they wrote their own shows, their own material. No one told them what to say or what not to say. And they would really contrast that to, to things like U.S. corporate meth- um, U.S. corporate networks where things are, are very scripted and very locked down. Yeah, I don't think that's to say that, that how you know, uniquely amazing Russia's uh, media is, but just how far bad the U.S. media has gotten. Mm. And you, you had other people on the network like Tara Reid, uh, Jesse Ventura, a very popular show there. Um, the late great Ed Schultz. Yeah, rest in peace. He came over. There. He came over to RT America when MSNBC shut him down. Because you know he talked too much about unions and working people. Yeah, like old Ed Schultz said, let's get to work. Let's get to work. <laughs> now the 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 censorship regime. You know, sometimes I think of it as as kind of this Frankenstein monster that. That I think even the people who who started it up and push it, you know, really aren't necessarily in control of it. It it, it becomes it becomes this this mob mentality, where it's um, where it, it can target anyone and almost almost anything. You saw um, like New York Times editors being uh, being fired over over kind of a mob mob mentality. You, you have a certain. I can get into some a little bit of trouble here, but you, you have a certain type of, of young PMC class type of, of person who who feels that, that the world the world should really conform to them. And it, yeah. if it's anything that discomforts them is something that they should be allowed to just get rid of. Right. And it's also the kind of person that um, really, really likes to get outraged and really, really likes to <laughs> likes to to, to get that um, like in their mind, it's that like justice um, adrenaline hit where they're 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 taking down the thing that they're outraged about, and it becomes very tribal in that way. And so, in terms of kind of the, the Frankenstein monster, you know, aspect of this, you had um, the show arising on the hill. You know, and the hill is is a, a very corporate, you know, really kind of a right wing newspaper and you know, a corporate network. But even they they got dinged because they they did a segment that that had a short. Um, bit of video from Donald Trump saying, you know, the things he says about the election, and because they didn't put it in proper context, um, that episode actually that episode was squashed, and the whole channel was suspended for a week. And so, how are people uh, going to expect uh, good and unbiased journalism uh, when there are so many of these barriers in, in the way? And so. With the with the Russia Ukraine conflict, we've seen um, you know, the terms of service being updated at YouTube. It seems almost on a daily basis, uh, basically in, in whatever way you know suits them to do what they want to censor at that point or what they're they're hearing from. Um, and so you know you had this one from a little while back saying, you know, uh, they're, now their their guidelines prohibit denying, minimizing, or trivializing well-documented violent events i mean can that be any more broad it's <laughs> yeah that's uh really subjective I, I don't i don't know who is making those judgment calls on what is uh trivializing but that's that's definitely um it's definitely arbitrary <laughs> and it's this thing where um they're they're not only doing it but they're they're bragging about it i mean censorship used to be a thing that would only be done as, as a last resort it'd be like something that you know oh well i guess we we have to and now they're like they're saying here since our last update our teams have removed more than a thousand channels and fifteen thousand videos for violating not only our hate speech policy but also our policies around misinformation graphic content and more 
and it's like it's like they're it's like they're they're trying to sell you something here it's they're bragging about it yeah and it speaks it speaks also to to the what's happening with that that sort of group that you were talking about before is very very vocal uh group with with money and and influence and power and, and impressive job titles that um is pushing for this and is cheering on and cheering on you know and so there, there's this question of of what are people supposed to do you know and you'll get arguments like that you know oh they're a private co- corporation you don't you don't have to use them and it's like so you're going to go broadcast on the other youtube i mean it's you know yes they're competitors and they're rising like like rockman and rumble and odyssey and i i hope they become real competitors but at this point if, if you're a content creator you you can't ignore youtube you can't just just not be on it if you're already established like Glenn, Glenn Greenwald has managed to do this on Rumble, and I'd, I'd recommend anyone to check out what he's doing. And um, you know, and I think Jimmy Dore has expanded onto Rumble and, and gets good views there. And, and I hope it, it becomes something where it's not just YouTube, but it's um, you know that that's that, this excuse. You know, any anybody who says you know, oh, well, they're, they're a private business, so they can just do their terms of censorship and they, they can just show or not anyone you want. I mean, it, that's, it, it's not a serious argument <laughs> Yeah, what's not, going on here. It's underestimating the power that YouTube does have in, in the general discourse. Um, you know, I've heard that, that as, as, as many as one, one third of people in the world uh, have, have at one point or another made a YouTube account, which would make it the most used social media platform. It's a place where people uh, go for just about anything. I mean, if we just think about, oh, I need to make a repair on something in the house, you know, what do you do? You look on a YouTube video. It is really so important and really has um, almost like taken over the, the media of television in itself and so there's this idea that sometimes you know you might be able to treat it as a public utility um and, and doing that but yeah it's, it's it's a really important thing or really it's something that people should get riled up about is is the the amount of censorship on what essentially is the the global meeting space of youtube the new public square yeah and you know you, you see it in other platforms um there was recently a big round of censorship on discord which is a popular one among among gamers, but also among a lot of, of lefty type streamers, um, and they form you know communities on there, and they just at one point whoever runs Discord just decided they didn't like one of the channels on there and what they were saying, and they deleted that channel and they also permanently deleted the account of two of the admins on that channel, and these admins also help out a lot of other lefty channels, and it was it was ridiculous, but you know they they just. Um, they own the company and they make the rules. Yeah, I mean, there's there's really, as we were getting to, the, there's no limit at the amount of voices that they will shut down. And so there's this idea of like, where you're, where you know, is there other places to go? So, you know, we all know the problems with, with Google and Google search. And so we might we tend to go to DuckDuckGo. I, I tend to use DuckDuckGo over, over Google. And then... In, well, in one fell swoop recently, you know, DuckDuckGo managed to trash the whole reason for existing. <laughs> and this is the, you know, the guy who runs it, Gabriel Weinberg, saying, um, you know, like so many others, sickened by Russia and Russia's invasion. And at, at DuckDuckGo, we've been rolling out search updates that downrank sites associated with Russian disinformation. Wow. You know, and what does that even mean? And you, know, you, you have the 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 problem with censorship that you always have is that who makes a decision who who decides what's dis, what's disinformation what gets to stay or go I mean, there's also this this thing too that that when it gets into you know the, they're they're basically making like censorship algorithms too, of, of which also those those algorithms are sometimes getting back to that the thing where it's like poorly controlled. And so I assume that's what DuckDuckGo is doing. They must be having some sort of thing where that they're reading keywords off of websites and downvoting them in the search engine. And uh, you know that's just a, that's a really just a dangerous precedent here. Is precedents getting setting uh, set rather that are that are troubling. And it gets into algorith- algorithmic suppression and shadow banning. And you have the, these soft forms of censorship that in some ways are more insidious and dangerous than, than just outright disappearing things. Yeah, and uh, and you mean just think about um, you know people that that talked about um, you know Iraq and the WMDs and, and a lot of these things that have happened over the years. If they had said that at that time, they would have been censored down. Now, now we would realize and, and recognize that they were onto something. MLK, Malcolm X, all these voices would have been censored during their time. 
Um, and so that's just something to keep in, in mind in context, even if even if you are somebody that that is questioning about, you know, the things of censoring and if there's a reason for it, just just, you know, for, for a second, just think about that, that thing and that the people that we now look back as heroes of whistleblowers, they would have been censored in their time, too. So one of the journalists that that writes about this a lot, that, that talks about this a lot that I really respect is, is Matt Taibbi. And he has a really good series. I'd recommend um, subscribing to his Substack. He he writes about these issues a lot. He has a series called uh, Meet the Censored, where he highlights people who have been censored in in various ways. One of the things I heard him say about it at one point is that, um, as far as whether he's highlighting people that are like would be considered left wing or or right wing, he. He said that, that he, he could find plenty of both examples and he could be highlighting people on, on the right who are being censored on a regular basis. But he says he actually has gone out of his way to, to highlight people more on the left who are being censored because the people on the left are the ones that are supposed to be upset about this. It's supposed to be a value to the LC, ALCU types. Right. And so, you know, the censorship always comes back onto the left. I mean, that's the, the, the left-wing voices are the ones who are really against power, against imperialism, against you know, corporate control. And, the, you know, they're the ones who are really going to end up censored. Um, but among his examples, I'll bring this up, of uh, Meet the Censored, was Sherry DeVille. And, um, and she, you know, runs a site that, you know, is making use of her assets it's not bad on the eyes, <laughs> and um, and you know what this one gets into is, is censorship that gets into like payment processors, and how I mean I remember back in the day when WikiLeaks when all WikiLeaks first came on the scene, the payment processors shut down payments to WikiLeaks, and they just they just did it PayPal, Mastercard, Visa they just decided WikiLeaks was bad and and they made it very difficult to, to continue to give donations to them. Yeah, I forgot about that. I remember that now. I think mm -hmm. like pretty much it was like crypto that you had to, to use. I mean they managed to set up other processors overseas. Oh yeah. And and you know, and of course they survived and whatnot. But that just kind of happened and everybody was just you know, it, it didn't seem to be very much of a stink. <laughs> yeah. So now this story gets into um, Visa and MasterCard, you know, imposing new rules as they they say to stamp out illegal activity in pornography sites, and you know, as Sherry Deville talks, and she's actually very well spoken. Not that that should be surprising. I mean, that's um, there's no reason she wouldn't be. But uh, and and she she talks about how it, it's it's not even it's not even just the straight up you know that you can't have pornography or something like. She she talks about, you know, as she puts here, like, you know, women are allowed to squirt, but we're not allowed to urinate. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we can't insert our panties anymore because um, that's an object. So that's like the rules. Like you can't, you know, they can't insert objects in, into their orifices. But um, so if it's a carrot shaped dildo, that's a no, no. But if it's a phallic shaped dildo, that's apparently OK, because it's not considered uh, a foreign object <laughs> and it's, it's got a rules that, that just, <laughs> yeah, it makes no sense. That's <laughs> that, for sure. That just gets into it. And, um, and she has a good, good quote here. Let's see if I can find it. Um, oh, here we go. I highlighted it help highlighted for your, to be helpful. All right. Um, the general public, so this is uh, quoting from Sherry DeVille. The general public should freak out that MasterCard now controls what they can and cannot watch. Today they're regulate, regulating porn, but what if they start deciding what cinema and books we consume? Because, you know, there's just a heck of a lot of control there with the payment processors. That actually really surprised me. I, I thought that there would be with financial services some kind of regulation that you find it's not up to financial services to, to decide what people are buying with it but I mean, that's 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 news to me i mean yeah that's obviously very troubling i mean you, you know you have those companies too that they they run all these infrastructures of of payment processing and and they can essentially just um you know freeze your bank accounts and and that, that amount of power that they have there is is, is is scary it should be scary yeah and you can get into things like social credit systems and really just increasing <clears throat> that whole that whole power and 
And, you know, you can end up with this system where if you get on the wrong side of the establishment of, of the narrative, you know, not only can you be censored and blocked from social media, but it gets to the point where you could be blocked from your bank accounts. Yeah. And, and basically pushed out of society. Uh, essentially, yeah. Um, and um that that's 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 that should be scary um you know and it's, it's something that we need to, to fight on because you know especially now that that you know technology is um is, is neutral right technology has no motivation technology is only motivated by the people that are controlling it and so especially now with everything being online everything is is in cloud storage if, if we don't fight back on this this amount of control then then they literally can wipe away every record of of you not not literally it's not me saying that there'll be no record of you but if you have no banking services you know, you have no email, you have no YouTube to go and make the whatever content you want, then, um, you know, you're, you're essentially personless. You become it's, excluded from society. Yeah, definitely. One thing that, like, it's one thing that annoys me is you see sometimes um, in the cities, mostly uh, these businesses that, that really, really pride themselves on being cashless. And I mean, sure, cash can be frustrating to carry around. Nobody really likes a, you know, pile of coins in their pocket. But that being said, to me, a cashless business means homeless people not welcome. And so that's that's just a, a way that you can be exuded from from society in that way. One of the things that I've thought about with with the censorship regimes is that people people talk about Google. In this case, we're talking about payment processors. Talk about social media companies, and they they blame the the, the media companies and and the the, the corporations, but. The real reason why, especially in, in social media, this censorship now is, has kicked up and is really being pushed, it it really has come from the politicians and from, from Congress. I mean, Congress and the Democrats, frankly, leading it, um, pulled the heads of these social media companies, you know, into congressional hearings and threatened them with regulation, with essentially like, like breaking up their companies if they didn't do something about quote you know disinformation misinformation online um, these media companies really don't want to be doing that it's really you know they they would rather just you know sit there and run the ads and take in the money and they'll get pressure from advertisers for things to be ad friendly and they'll they'll respond to that but they, they don't want to be um they don't want to be talking about um disinformation and censoring and taking people off um but they're they've been forced to you know by the politicians yeah and uh you know question the money and it all gets down to those motivations and um and controlling a narrative and propaganda yeah which of course all of those people in, in congress all those politicians uh they are egotistical they want control it's the, that that sort of, of element uh, gets gets into this a type of people that want to be above and be those people that are in control of saying what is and what is not verboten so one of the things with censorship I think of is is it's really almost like a feudal mindset where you have you know the elite lords you know treating people like peasants like like children and you know deciding what is acceptable and not acceptable parental control <laughs> and you know and they work to divide us and you get people from you know one side of the of the political divide and they're accepting it because they they think of it as going after the other guys that's a big thing right now with with lefties and liberals and and they they see censorship as as going after the trumpers mm -hmm. and you know you gotta you gotta watch out and you gotta deal with those dangerous trumpers you know the the other guys and they, they just see it as a weapon to be used that way. And it's like, it's like their, their thinking stops there because, you know, MSNBC is not telling them that, <laughs> that it's, it's, a, it's something that's going to come back onto them. Right. 